We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Do we, though? Do we really know that all things work for good? This health problem, that tragedy, this loneliness, they benefit me? Yes. And that's why St. Paul has been teaching us about hope in our journey through Romans chapter 8, our second reading. Despite all the trials we endure, we have hope because we know, or should know, that all of it works for our ultimate good. At least they do if we are called according to his purpose and if we love God. And that raises this question, how can we be sure we fit that category, that we are called according to his purpose? This is the reason that St. Paul lays out a kind of stairway to heaven with five steps in this reading. Foreknowledge, predestination, calling, justification, and glorification. So how does this stairway work? We can take them one at a time. But we do have to keep some mental space open for the mystery of God's will, which is beyond our comprehension. There will always be something beyond us. But as long as we keep a hold of that mystery, we can still gain some genuine understanding. And the mystery hits us right away. Those he foreknew, he also predestined. God knows everything, including our future decisions. He knows our ultimate fate, but without forcing us, into that fate. His knowledge and our free will are not a contradiction. Predestination, defined correctly, is a scriptural and Catholic idea. A key aspect of that definition is that it does not override our free will and that God predestines no one to go to hell. God neither forces people into heaven nor plans for any individual to go to hell. Those who arrive in heaven are predestined for it. Those who arrive in hell chose that for themselves by choosing mortal sin. It helps to remember that St. Paul wrote another letter, 1 Timothy, which teaches that God wills everyone to be saved. So you could say that, generally speaking, God predestines everyone for heaven, but allows people to reject that. And this brings us back to that stairway in Romans 8. Those he predestined, he also called. God wants everyone to be saved, so he calls everyone to himself. And this call is a total gift from God. There's nothing we do to be called. It is from God. And so that brings us back to that earlier question. How do I know I've been called? The answer matters because those who are called get everything to work for their benefit. For those who aren't, well, but we have an answer. How do I know I'm called? Because God calls everyone. Everyone. He calls them to salvation. Still, that leaves us with that other requirement for benefiting from everything. Loving God. What does it mean to love God? How do I do it so I can get this guaranteed benefit St. Paul is talking about? Loving God means many things, but an essential part of it lines up directly with the next step on St. Paul's stairway to heaven. Those he called, he also justified. What's interesting about this step is that it's the first one that depends on us. Think about that. On the stairway to heaven, the first three steps are taken for us by God. And there's only five in the whole thing. And this fourth step, justification, only requires one thing from us. Acceptance, assent, belief, faith. And even faith is itself a gift of grace. But it is the first thing that we have a choice to refuse. To love God means, in part, to accept 
his justification of us in faith. We cannot stop him from knowing us, loving us, calling us, but we can choose whether to accept or to reject it. And if we do not accept the call, if we do not let ourselves be justified, we do not love God. We would not, therefore, be able to say that everything works for our good. But you have been justified. Your baptism, every sincere sacramental confession, is justification. A choice to accept God's call to conversion, to turn towards him in love and be justified. But it doesn't stop there, does it? St. Paul gives us one final step. Those he justified, he also glorified. And this is where our Protestant brothers and sisters get a little lost. They teach sola fide, sola gratia, faith alone, grace alone. And up to this point, they're basically right. The knowledge, the predestination, the call, the justification are all gratuitous grace from God. We are justified by faith and grace, not by our accomplishments. Justification is the treasure buried in a field. We didn't make the field or put the treasure there. All we can do is choose to buy it. And even the money we use, our free will, is itself a gift from God. Once we have that treasure, however, there is the glorification. Justified by faith, we are called to live a heavenly life, the life of children of light, here and now. We are saved, but our salvation is ongoing. Glorification does involve our work. Work made possible by God and by grace, but work nonetheless. We do not earn salvation, but once we've received it, we grow in it by increasingly conforming our will to God's will, working to make our lives an offering to his glory. To love God is not just to accept justification. It is to work towards him with glorification. So when faced with despair and suffering and trial, how can we use these teaching, this stairway, to regain our hope? To convince ourselves that even these darkest moments will ultimately work out for our true good? By remembering this, God calls you, and you can love God in return. And if you don't love him, he still calls you. So accept that grace and start loving him now. Continue to accept that grace. It is an all-in kind of thing to sell everything you have to buy it. Love is not a one-time decision, as any married person can tell you, but an ongoing one. And if you stop climbing the stairs at justification, at baptism, and you're done, you will eventually fall to the gravity of sin, losing even the step of justification. So keep climbing towards glory, and you'll keep your justification. And if this brings pain and setbacks, if it's impeded by faults and weaknesses, do not worry. Is God calling you? The answer is always yes. Do you love God? Choose to do so now, and you can take comfort in the fact that even this trial, this weakness, is working toward your good. You have only to love God one day at a time until finally you reach the day that does not end. When you can look back and see God was there, always there, like a treasure buried in a field, a pearl of great price. That field, that pearl can belong to you right now if you're willing to buy it. What does it cost? Your will, your choice, to let go of other things and choose the God who has already chosen you.